In this video, I paint a Zangor from the Pyrophane Cult. Hello, this is Craig from bitsbox.co.uk with another painting tutorial. So in this video, I'm going to paint a Zangor for the Pyrophane Cult. So we're um, continuing on from last week's video where I painted the Acolyte from the Pyrophane Cult. And we're now going to do a Zang Zangor. So these Zangors have like pink flesh and they have a black and gold armor. I'm just going to do it for tr traditional Pyrophane Cult armor rather than the Burning Eye. Um, just to sort of mix it up a little bit. Um, we're still doing the same sort of level of standard as we did last week, so sort of like a tabletop standard, because I have a lot of these to get out, so they're not going to be my best work, but hopefully um, you guys will enjoy this video, and yeah, um, that's all that's left to say, so let's just get straight into it. So here we have our Zangor miniature, and he has been undercoated in a white undercoat. So if you are using a white or a light grey primer, then you can go straight in to this step with Pink Horror. And this is for all the flesh. Um, if you are using a black undercoat, mind you, um, I would recommend doing a couple of thin layers of Screamer Pink first. That way that will give you a nice um, base coat to work from when you do the Pink Horror. So I'm going to do a couple of thin coats of this all over the flesh areas and that will give us a nice, solid, smooth base to work from. So next up, we are going to take some Xerus Purple and we're going to apply this to the um, sort of back half of all the tentacles on his head and just sort of a lower half of his legs as well. This is just to give us a bit more colour on the flesh, just to make it a little bit more interesting. So I thinned this out a bit more than I usually would. And I'm just going to apply it carefully over all these tentacles. And then when I come to do the second coat, I'll apply it just a little bit more towards the tips, just to give us a little bit of a gradient. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing on the legs as well. If you really wanted to do a higher standard on this miniature, then you could do several glazers working your way down the leg. And that will give you a nice transition between the two. So next up, we are going to shade these two areas. And we're going to take some Jeruchi Violet. And I'm going to thin this out with a little bit of medium just because I don't want it to be too overpowering on the pink. So um, just work this into all the recesses on all the pink and the purple areas and that will help bring both of them together as well. And that will give you a nice subtle shade in all the recesses which will really help bring out the detail in the flesh. And at this stage you don't really have to be neat about it. So next up we can begin highlighting the pink areas and we're going to take some Emperor's Children. So as always I just thin it out just a little bit and we're going to apply it to all the raised areas of the muscle just leaving the previous steps showing in the recesses. So this is probably the longest step on the entire miniature but it's well worth it and will really bring out the detail in all that flesh. So just take your time and work your way around the miniature. So next up, we're going to take some Fulgrim Pink and we're going to add this to the Emperor's Children in a 50-50 mix. And this is going to be our next stage of highlighting. So we're going to take this colour and um, just apply it to more of these sharper points now. They're just more of the centres of the raised parts of the muscles. Um, definitely concentrate around the face area. So there's a lot of detail there. And just apply it as you would any normal highlight. So I'm just going to run it a little bit up the tentacles as well. So just work your way around all the flesh and um, with this highlight colour. So next we're going to add just a further highlight just with Fulgrim Pink on its own this time. Um, I'm going to thin it out though because it's quite a bright colour so if you thin it out that will dry a little bit more subtle. And this is just for, for much sharper details. So just right on the 
sharp little points on the flesh. Um, definitely concentrate around the face, bring out all the little details there, and just sharper points on all the muscles and even knuckles on the fingers as well. And here I am doing the little bits of um, like fur, but I will um, repaint that later on, so you ain't really got to worry about that. So, next up we are going to take some Zandri dust, and this is for his beak and his horns and his hooves. Now this miniature, in this particular miniature, doesn't have a lot of his horns showing through as they are mostly covered in armour, but those are a little bit. I just carefully um, paint these areas, not to get it on any of the pink, and then we paint his beak as well. And then lastly, um, we have his hooves. So now that that is dry, we're going to take some Agrax Earthshade and just apply all over shade wash to these areas. I haven't really thinned it down much because I'm sort of going for a nice sort of darker bone with these. So try not to pull up too much. It's pulled up a little bit there, but I'll eventually go around and just suck up a little bit of my brush as you saw there. Just make sure it doesn't pull too much. So, next up we're going to take some, some Messy Desert, and this is going to be our highlight colour. So I'm going to apply it the same way I did with the first layer on the flesh, just making sure we just leave the um, existing colours in the recesses, and that will help really bring out the detail. Now it's a bit hard to see on the, on the camera, so I do apologise for that. But I'm just carefully, just carefully working my way around these little ridges on the horns, going across the beak. And as the paint is thin, um, it won't dry as light as it first is, goes on. And then with the hooves, I'm just sort of just running up, up either side of the central ridge. So next up we're going to do the gold areas and we're going to take some Retributor armour. So there's quite a lot of gold areas on this miniature. Um, as I said earlier we have the armour around the horns. I'm also going to paint the central piece in his axe. Um, he has a lot of gold on his armour as well. And his other little trinkets and stuff. So really um, just go around the miniature and work out what you want to be gold and just paint all of them with this colour. And I believe I only needed one coat with this. Um, I do really like Retributor armour, I think it really applies really well, especially on lighter undercoats. So with that dry we can now add a shade to the gold areas. And we're going to take some Seraphim Sepia. And I'm just applying it over all the gold areas, just to give it a little bit of shade. As you can see, there are a lot of gold areas on this miniature, so just be careful not to get any of the shade on any of the areas that we have previously painted. And just take your time and work your way around the miniature. So with that dry, we can now apply a highlight to it, and we're going to take some Uruk Armor Gold. So we're going to paint it slightly different to how I did the Acolyte, just so the videos aren't too identical, and then um, we're going to use this as a highlight. This does give you a really nice bright gold as well, which I do like um, doing on miniatures sometimes. And I'm just edge highlighting, so running it along the top of the horns. And I'm just edge highlighting all the armour around the axes. Or around the axe, I should say. And when it's done, you get a nice bright gold. So now we can take some Abaddon Black. And this is for all the black areas, uh, mainly in the armour. So these are going to be a bit fiddly to get to, um, especially if you have a Zangle with a two-handed weapon, like what I've got here. So um, yeah, he's going to be in all sorts of funky angles, so I do apologise um, if I do obscure him 
now and then, but I'm just very carefully working my way around. It's quite difficult to do on camera as well, because it's not a natural painting position for me. So I just do little bits that I can, and I will paint the rest of these areas off camera, but just take your time and work in amongst all the trim. And then when that's dry, you see um, we have all these black areas now done. So we're going to take some scaven black tinge and just highlight them. So when it comes to the arm, I'm just going to run it just up the central ridges like so. And most of the flatter armor, like around the wrists and his torso, don't really need a great deal doing. I'm just going to do a highlight running down his um, little knife scabbard as well. And as you can see as well, um, I didn't mention with the black, um, I have painted all his little fur as well. So next we're going to take some iron breaker for all the metal areas. So we have the axe head, um, and there's just a little bit of like chain mail or some sort of armor plate and just, just in the center of his tabard there. There's a little bit on the back also. With these metal areas dry, we're going to take some Nuln Oil. So I'm applying it quite heavily, just straight out of the pot, just to really um, help bring out the um, definition on the blade. I think it looks quite nice on the axe. And then just put a little bit in the little armor plates. With that dry, we can give it a highlight with some Rune Fang steel. You can, of course, use some Stormhouse silver if you want a much brighter highlight. But I thought we'll go with a little bit of a darker metal in this one, just to mix it up from the Acolyte video. Of course, you could paint your silver in the same way that I did in the previous video. It's entirely up to you. So with the metal areas done, we can now move on to the handle of his axe, and also the handle of his little knife as well. Take some Inky by Darkness. So I've, I've chosen this colour because it is part of the um, colour scheme for the Pyrophane Cult, but there wasn't really anything on this particular miniature to do in that colour, so I thought we'll do the handle. And then we're going to take some Thunderhawk Blue as a highlight. And this is quite a nice highlight for the Incubi Darkness. Um, I find if you do um, do a wash over the Incubi Darkness, then this colour might be a bit too bright as a highlight, so you might want to do some Dark Reaper instead. But I thought just to go in with, with the two colours, the base coat and the highlight, that looks quite nice, and it just makes it a little bit lighter, which is sort of what I was going for. So just carefully just pick out all these little bits on the handle. So next we're going to paint his tabard, and we're going to take some Ulfuan Grey. So again, I'm going to do the tabard slightly different to how I did the white areas in the previous video. We're going to paint Ulfuan Grey all over it. Now um, my Ulfuan Grey wasn't thinned down enough at this stage, which is why um, I wasn't really getting it into the recesses, but I do um, paint it all over off camera. And then we're going to take some Gilliman Blue, and we're going to thin, that, thin it down even more. And we're just going to paint it into recesses, we're not going to glaze it all over, we're just going to paint it into the recesses. So we're sort of just glazing the recesses. And then on the back, just carefully, again, paint it into the recesses. It will pull up a little bit, but you can sort of just smooth it out. And I'll give you a nice, subtle little blue in all of them recesses. Next up we're going to take some white scar, and this is to highlight the tabard. So I'm just going to run it along the top edges, all these creases. That gives us a nice highlight and a nice white for the tabard. So we have only 
one little thing to do next, and that is to paint the eyes and the gems. And we're going to take some warpstone glue. Of course, you don't have to have your eyes and gems a matching colour. But I thought just for for ease, um, that'd be much easier to do if we've done a lot of these. I have 20 of these to do, so why not do as many bits in the same colour as I can get away with? Hence why we're doing quite a simple little scheme on the gems as well. We're just going to take some moot green now and we'll just do a little highlight in the middle of the eye. And then when it comes to doing the gems, I just sort of paint this sort of in the sort of the top half of them. And I find it easier to hold the model at various different angles to get into these harder to reach areas. But um, yeah, that is him done. So um, yeah, I really love the Zangle miniatures. I think they're fantastic, and I really enjoy painting them in this pink color scheme. Now, of course, um, you could you paint your pink horrors in this scheme. I paint mine in exactly the same way as I did the pink flesh here and yeah I'm really happy with how this miniature turned out and I'm um, yeah mixing it up from the acolyte making them a little bit different um, even though we're painting a lot of the same colours sort of I thought it'd be nice to show you a couple of different ways of painting um, some of the colours but yeah I'm really happy with how this miniature has turned out and I really hope you guys have enjoyed watching me paint him and if you have then please do give the video a thumbs up and if you want to stay up to date with all the videos that we post on this channel, then please do um, hit that sub subscribe button down below. And if you want to be notified, there's a little bell icon also. And um, we also have a Patreon you can check out if you wish to support us any further. So, um, all that's left to say now is thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all in the next video.